Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. It's Monday once again, and we've got more tournament results for you. In fact, this is going to be the last tournament review for a little while, since this time next week we'll be starting up Dragons of Tarkir. Spoilers! Hi, hi! This week, we've got two standard top eights, one from the Grand Prix in Memphis and one from the Star City Games Open in Los Angeles. Now, we're changing up the tournament review a little bit. We'll start with the final standings and then take a quick look at some of the most interesting decks they used. This version is more condensed, but we also get to avoid talking about obs and midrange every three seconds, so that's a thing. Regardless, let us know what you think and try to remember what standard looks like now because in a month it could be completely different. Jack Fogel won the Grand Prix with Sultai Control. He was followed by Ben Stark in second place with White Red Aggro. Third through seventh place were as follows. Brad Nelson, Steve Rubin, Patrick Cow, Chris Finnell, and Alex Majlaton. If you're wondering why we listed them off like that, well it's because all five of them were using the same deck, obs and mid-range. Finally, Eric Rath took 8th place with a white-red aggro deck of his own. Shifting over to the SCG Open, let's rattle these off. Chad White won with white-red aggro. Second place went to David Moline playing Naya mid-range. Ken Shen took 3rd place with yet another obs and mid-range deck. William Miller finished 4th with Green Red Devotion. In 5th was Nick Gill, playing a deck very similar to White Red Aggro, but instead called Red White Aggro. I'm sure that's a big deal. Nicholas Allen took 6th with White Blue Heroic. 7th went to Gary Koch and his Mono Red Aggro deck, and Zach Scales finished out the top 8 with Just Guy Heroic. Let's take a look at some of the decks. We'll start with White Red Aggro and or Red White Aggro. Let's just let's just call it aggressive decks in Boros colors. We good? We we good. There were two distinct builds with some variations. Ben Stark's list from the GP was uniquely light on creatures, with Seekers, Rabble Masters, and Soulfire Grandmasters supplemented with Horbling Outburst. Eric Rath's deck was one of the more creature heavy lists and curved into big threats like Ash Cloud Phoenix and Stormbreath Dragon. Chad White's winning deck from the SCG Open was also heavy on creatures, but with some different numbers such as no Ash Cloud Phoenix and three Brahmas instead of two. Nick Gill's deck was another creature heavy variant with similarities to Wrath such as Ash Cloud Phoenix and Soulfire Grandmaster. All four decks use Outpost Siege and Chain to the Rocks, and three of them use Chandra Pyromaster to great effect. Interestingly, the inclusion of Chain to the Rocks led not only to lots of mountains on these lists, but also to evolving wilds in small numbers on some of them. This is what happens when we don't have Arid Mesa and Standards, hashtag first plane problems. When I said before that Naya Midrange took second in the SCG Open, that no doubt raised some eyebrows, so let's have a look at that deck. For those who don't remember or perhaps never knew, Naya means a green-red-white color combination. Looking at the creature list, this deck seems mostly like a green-red monsters list. Elvish Mystic, Sylvan Caryatid, and Corsair Crucifix bring the ramp. Pelucrano, Shaman of the Great Hunt, Relative Newcomer, Whisperwood Elemental, and even an Arbor Colossus are the threats. Goblin Rabbit Master is also here suggesting an aggressive angle, and Perforos God of the Forge is an unusual inclusion, but makes sense with the number of cards in the deck that make creatures. Beyond the Elemental and the Rabble Master, both of the decks Planeswalkers, Elspeth, and Xenoghost can make tokens as well. There's also Mastery of the Unseen, a very offbeat card that shows up as a two of. It plays nice with Whisperwood Elemental and can also manifest cards on its own. The ability to turn up any creature you manifest makes it almost like drawing more creatures, and the Mastery lets you gain life by doing so. There's a Shamanic Revelation to reload later in the game, and two end hostilities to clear the board. Odds are you'll be in better shape than your opponent to rebuild, especially if you just cast that revelation or activate a Shaman of the Great Hunt. Lastly, let's take a look at another pretty fresh deck that we saw in the open, Gary Koch's Mono Red Aggro list. We saw quite a bit of the strategy back when Return to Ravnica was still in standard, but it's been pretty far under the radar since Khan's Tarkir rotated in. Fire Drinker, Seder, Monastery, Swift Spear, and Foundry Street Denizen bring the pressure in the early game. There are plenty of spells in the deck to hit those prowess triggers. Mardu Scout makes for some interesting decisions with its dash ability, but importantly, if you dash him out, he dodges sweepers like on Hostilities and Crux of Fate. Goblin Rabbit Master is just good, especially on a list like this. Wild Slash, Lightning Strike, and Stoke the Flames provide efficient removal solutions for anything short of a Siege Rhino. That's when you board and harness by force. 
Hordling Outburst gives you more goblins to apply additional pressure. It does so by triggering Prowess on Swift Spear, triggering Foundry Street Denizen three times, and giving the Rabble Master a potential plus three plus zero on the attack. And Outpost Siege gives you gas into the late game or can also give you additional insurance against sweepers. Anyways, that'll wrap up our tournament review for this week. Another reminder, next week we won't be here with results because we'll instead be kicking off the Dragons of Tarkir spoiler season. Oh yes, the spoiler hype is real. By the way, let us know what you think about the new tournament review format. Yes, no, maybe, all feedback is appreciated. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Manasaurus, I'm Wedge, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.